today what i will do is i will start with something called as uh, before the assessment we should we should see we should understand that we have a heterogeneous group of children what is heterogeneous it is like the adiyar anand bhavan mixture you know anand bhavan in chennai are you able to hear me yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah. then i'm asking you a question you are not answering different uh, things is heterogeneous ma'am belongs to different yes yes like you have a madras mixture you have murku you have groundnuts you have badam and you can have cashew nut you have karas you have aval but they are not in sort of a fixed proportion when you see the molecules of sugar all the molecules of sugar will have the same composition so heterogeneous even in a classroom we have a combination of heterogeneous learners heterogeneous uh, combination of students so what are these heterogeneous components i'll just um, mm -hmm. yes vijayalakshmi ma'am yes ma'am uh, yeah i'll just show you one particular slide which is so uh, well explanatory one little slide and uh, very important to analyze this because our teacher teaching will be uh successful only when we are reached to all type of students this is called as a work analysis a guide to learning preferences i give you a small example to all my teachers to whomever i meet in the teaching faculty i tell them that there are four type of people children sitting in front of us like somebody all of us are in a state where uh, we we learn lot of recipes to cook and now that so many youtube channels are there definitely in this two years of time we have become very good cooks okay yes or no Shri, yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma so there is abundance of youtube videos now if you ask people no they'll say one set of people suppose we are 40 of us some people will say you yeah, i can just read one recipe and i can make and uh, some people will say okay you just tell the recipe i'll be able to make a make that particular uh, item some people will say that uh, when you make no when i see no then i will learn otherwise i find it very difficult ninga son chumma sonna i cannot i have to see when you are making the halwa there are a group of children who will say a, a group of teachers will say i have to make the halwa for me to learn all of us can learn 30% 50% just by seeing or hearing and writing or uh, seeing or doing it but predominantly we belong to one learning all of us are either visually strong orally hearing strong reading strong kinesthetically strong am i making myself very clear Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma some of us are very visually very strong. Our children, they will hundred percent of learning happens when they see. Some people just students will hear to your lecture, go home and read their lessons. Done. There are children who have to read a lot, and there are children who want to do to learn. And to all the four groups of students. we need to take care in the class because we are a bigger group suppose we are just 10 of us one is to 10 ratio we can give one one same um, theory part in different ways to two children three three children but when we have a 40 it becomes very difficult so we need to integrate lot of different types of activities in such a manner that all the four varieties of children are taken care of so suppose i am teaching 
floating and uh, yesterday I was teaching you floating and sinking. So what I do, I tell them that there are certain substances. If you put in water, they will sink. They will go down the beaker. Some will be there floating on the top. They will just be on the top. So you have finished, um, uh, you know, you have finished telling the oral group. And then you read those four sentences from the book. The reading is over. Then what about the visual? What about the visual? You take experience in the class. You can show that experiment. Ah, Practical. Show the yes. experiment. Take the beaker, children. Put some water. Then take a piece of safety, uh, one safety pin and drop it. Take one piece of plastic or thermocol and drop it. Children, this is there only on the top. This has gone to the bottom. What a big material has sunk. The top material is floating. So such children. And then for some children, come, come, come. There will be some children very good with their hands. So what they will do? They'll put the sand. That will sink. Then they'll put uh, uh, dry leaves. It will float. And uh, by doing, they have learned. So we need to understand that there are four varieties of children in the class and we need to satisfy every child's way of learning. Am I very clear? Yeah. So this is the analysis. We have to think. Don't even do an analysis. We know all four types of children are sitting there. And we need to suffice their learning hunger. Satisfy their learning hunger because everybody wants to learn. Everybody wants to learn. There is nobody who says, ma'am, I will not learn. I don't and I don't want. Nobody says that. Even if they are scared of us or whether they are happy with us, none of the children come to us and say, I don't want to learn. They are happy to learn. So once you have decided which, uh, what is the topic, you have to think of all type of activities for the children. They may be seeing a tomato in the house with a sepal on the top. You show the tomato with the sepal in the house, school. It makes a lot of difference. Please understand that right from first standard, right from LKG, they, they see a lot of... They see a lot of uh, things at home, but when you teach in the class, the learning is in a different, uh, uh, different uh, platform. So be very careful, show them everything, especially in EVS. We have plenty of things to do and show. You can show grains in one lesson. You can show different types of dicotyledon seeds in the class. You can show them. Uh, okay, that I'll tell you when I'm teaching you the methodology. Next is, I'll get into methodology of teaching. There are many methods to teach. There are many, many different methodologies to teach. Okay. So, there are some methodologies in teaching EVS. This will hold good with many of the subjects also. So, if you're teaching uh, maybe social science, all these will be, these methodologies, we have named them. Uh, we actually have been doing this in the classroom. Now we are naming them. First one is a teacher-centered approach to learning. Uh, the teacher delivers knowledge to lectures and direct instructions. It is a traditional method of teaching. I come, I teach, I go. It's direct. Sometimes teacher delivers the knowledge straight away is very important because sometimes what happens, we cannot ask the children to find out on their own because certain concepts are little difficult. So this uh, may be a traditional method of teaching, but sometimes a teacher needs to put across certain things to the students in a proper manner. Next one, we have the student-centered approach to learning. So what is happening here? The teacher stands as a facilitator, guide, and student assume a much more active learning, uh, learning uh, 
active role in learning process and the students learn and are actively assessed on activities like group activities and class participation. So you are just standing at the back and you are observing them. There's a lot of participation in a particular, suppose they are making, uh, I normally give them a activity like uh, making a poster in the class. So you will find, you know, uh, there will be a group of four people. They'll have lots of things. One person will be able to give a lot of ideas. In that, one person is very quietly listening and putting uh, all the things on the chat paper. Another one is running around to get things. So you're actively uh, assessing the children and uh, uh, you can go around and then keep on asking them questions. What are you doing? Uh, why aren't you doing this? Why are you doing this? All this, you are just acting as a guide. And the children, you know, when it is a student-centered approach, there's lots of, um, you will see many, many things uh, from the student's uh, point of view. And you'll be surprised that the children give a lot of ideas, which you also sometimes, you know, you will not have those things coming into your brain. So this is student centers. This can be done in the class. Next is high-tech approach. Devices like laptop, what we are using now, you can connect if your school is digital. What I normally do is I collect all the YouTubes and all that. One day I go to the computer lab. Once, because they love to roam around. One day computer lab. One day we go to the biology lab and tell hello to the skeleton. I take them to the physics lab. Just go around once. Then we have a small garden, suppose. I take them to the garden. I just go around the school to show them the different plants. So high-tech approach also. I take all the digital uh, videos in uh, one pen drive. I go, I keep my get my you know, projector, everything ready. And I show all the videos because... Sometimes we are not able to get one one period per uh, going and coming and showing and we don't get that much of time. I collect all the videos in one pen drive and I show them. When I go to a ninth standard practical class, I carry my laptop. I have my PPT presentations or I have certain uh, videos to be shown. 20 children will be there in the class. 10 children will be doing the uh, activity. 10 children, I'll show them the something which I love to show them in the laptop. So there are many ways, but high-tech approach has become the need of the art. And this is flipped classroom. This flipped classroom, you have to be careful. But at the same time, it is very useful. You just speak about one particular topic. Are you all there with me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, are you yes, able to... Um, Am I able to relate to all these things and you're able to understand? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma ma yes, ma Thank you, ma'am. So flipped classroom. This flipped classroom, one or two activities, I do that. This is how you know the student do a classroom portion of the learning at home and homework in the class. Flipped. Uta. Opposite. Children watch or read these lessons on computers at home then complete assignments and problem solving in the class. So what I do, two in two way, two things that I, uh, all these years we were not allowing the children to use their laptops and all without the parental guidance. And uh, one or two activities, what I do is I tell them, uh, uh, say 15 days before I start um, the seed lesson or uh, the germination of seed, I tell them you take a small um, plastic box, make a hole, put some soil, and then put some water and put some green gram, mustard seeds, uh, vendium seeds, uh, fenugreek seeds, different types of seeds. I'll ask them to put and I'll ask them to observe for five days. And then when they come back to school, I finish their germination diagrams. I ask them what happened and there will be children who will be crying, yes, it never grew. Yes, it never. Then we analyze why they have not grown. Then I can tell them the conditions for germination to happen. Yes. And there is another experiment where they, we need water, uh, warmth and air. Air for uh, germination of seeds. I tell them to put some seeds which are soaked in the nights, a part of it in the uh, refrigerator. Okay. All these things can be done. Even vegetative propagation in uh, 6, 7, 8. I tell them to start growing the stems of the podina uh, mint leaves. 
the mama eats uh, takes all the leaves and puts her puts it in biryani and there are stems the stem can be planted and let it see how it grows so this is flipped classrooms but be very careful sometimes uh, the children do not understand the topic but unless and until we guide them where to go in the laptop and search for topics then kinesthetic approach they do hands on hands on physical activities okay so this uh, lots of activities the children can be made to do and the next variety is the inquiry based different student might participate in different projects developing their own projects and then concluding research and sorry and concluding research and okay sorry this conclude is not there so uh, inquiry based now we want to know how many of the children are eating uh, a balanced diet in the class so what we do we take four children we tell them row wise you find out what was their breakfast what was their lunch what was their dinner okay and then uh, we uh, try to make a graph a bar graph saying that so many children had breakfast with this lunch dinner and then we come to a conclusion we conclude the research by saying that so many children had junk food so many children did not have proteins we can come to a conclusion it's very important children our teachers the inquiry based what is going on around us we can get some data and we can come to a conclusion this children do and uh, 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 enjoy blended learning blended learning is to bring lot of flexibility in the classroom we try to uh, we try to learn about each student's learning style and develop strategies to teach to every learner by building flexibility and choice into the curriculum this becomes a little difficult in our our this thing that is what they say but here we can give them flexibility we tell them okay you want to do like this you do you want to make a project written project you do you want to make a uh, a video yes you can do that you want to grow and show fine you can give them a lot of choice that is how you bring lot of flexibility in the classroom so uh, uh, sometimes what happens in a science classroom uh, some yeah. children are ready to do lot of experiments yeah. and some children are able to write some today will bring a nice uh, ppt presentation and say ma'am i made this ppt presentation about the volcano and uh, we will show that this a uh, blending learning brings lot of flexibility in the classroom so these are our method. we can use different methodologies be careful that what methodology you are using finally all the 40 or the 50 your concept we start very well and the evs we don't have a problem at all we can get maps please use the globe extensively let the children feel the globe they will drop the globe doesn't matter but let them touch the globe let them see the latitudes and longitudes and the imaginary lines let them feel if this is the sun oh this side we will see darkness day and light if you are teaching use the globe extensively use the map extensively if you have yes ma'am yes ma'am it will be done it will be done ah solar system is a beautiful lesson ask them to get the tennis ball plastic balls waste ones yes take a small cardboard uh -huh. and place their tennis balls as our eight planets and a beautiful sun and ask them to color because every navagraha has a different color yes and they will color it and then you stick yes. them on the cardboard Chart. and make orbits and tell them that there is lot of discipline if there was no discipline among the parents we would have got fallen on each other please yes. make that solar system it is beautiful ask them to bring their tennis balls the plastic ball which they break and throw okay and out of the 40 children beautifully you will get 10 ball because if you ask as i told in one of the classes when i used to teach them rocks and diamonds and rupees they are ready to bring diamonds to the class and show me 
My mummy wears diamond. I want to show. So our children will give their life for us. So I tell yes, them I yes. don't want diamonds and garnets and uh, uh, rubies and emeralds. I am happy with my coal and my marble. Marble. So they will get the ball. You get an old uh, cardboard from somewhere. Ask them to paint in the class. It will be messy. The whole class will be messy. And uh, or you get some clay from the kindergarten and they. The, we had the, done that, ma'am. We had done that black color chart paper. We had asked them to bring and clay, and with and that we yes. made that solar Make system. All the waste, use all waste material. The nursery department will have old clay. Bring that clay, make them into a ball. Ask the children to make kinesthetic learning, and your planets are ready. Just put those planets on the cardboard and write the names of the this thing, and put our beautiful sun. Yes. And tell them all of us are roaming around the sun in a yes. very organized path called as the orbit. Hmm. Their learning is over. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Anything you can bring kinesthetic. Anything you can bring as a project. Anything you can bring different yes. values like uh, responsibility. Other values yes, are there, ma'am. Ma I will bring the next time they don't bring, and you tell them, see. I'm not able to do the experiment. So when we tell something to the teacher, no, that we have to do. So it's a, it's, it's not, you know, this or this or this. It's all together that makes the teaching learning a beautiful process. Yes, this is the methodology. Then next is what are the different tools we will use? Mm. I have to share. I made a small PPT presentation for that also. Okay, different tools for learning. Ma'am, Your... excuse me, ma'am. Huh? What you are showing to us, uh, will you all post all this PPT in the group, ma'am? You tell me, you want me to post, I'll post. You don't want me to post. Ma'am, we are copying, that's more than enough. Anything is fine, ma'am. Ma'am, it will be helpful if you post it. Okay. So classroom educators today employ devices and sometimes creative methods involving specific class, uh, this thing, prompts, tools that require little explanation. So if I show one thing in the class now, I don't have to speak so much. To put a map of India, political map of India. Just ask them to stare at the map for five minutes. Mom, mom, this is there, that is there, this place is there, that capital is there. They will say so many states are there. Ma'am, what is this called, ma'am? Or how do you pronounce this name of the uh, state? It is Mizoram, Sikkim, Maharashtra. For kuti kuti children, for second, third, it's difficult. Fifth standard will come and tell stories about the map. Tell them some history of the map. Some stories, anecdotes. How the map came and how uh, Vasco de Gama made uh, this fellow Columbus made a mistake. That's a beautiful anecdote. Anecdotes are small uh, incidents that happened in, uh, in history. You should share about the scientists. Why certain accidents happened and that, that led to a great discovery. Prompts. Prompts are certain stimuli, you know, you just show them something. Uh, which uh, prompts them to give a response. Suppose I'm asking them, uh, what food do you dislike? And so they are thinking. So you show some photograph. Ma'am, I don't like this. Ma'am, I like this. So there will be a response to the stimulus that you are showing. And um, this I want to really show. Some of the tools that can be used in teaching EVSR. Story. Uh, story. Storytelling. This has gone up. I'll do the I'll do the editing. Storytelling. EVS is nothing but storytelling. Fifth standard, there's a beautiful story. Up we go. Which is a lesson that has that uh, loner bike. Loner bike, no? Up you go. He has got a loner. His name of a bike is loner. 
and from maharashtra he goes to himachal pradesh that's a beautiful way of traveling and telling a story and telling what are all the experiences and at the same time he finishes telling about so many there many many tools are there you will enjoy when we see you know you don't have to learning will be very easy for children field trips field trips i take them to the children's garden children's park i take them to the reptile park i take them to the we have a very nice um, railway museum Ch uh, teachers will have tears in eyes the history of the railways very very nice and each child you know is seeing at their own uh, iq levels the learning is happening in their own levels of iq so a uh, hands on activities we do laboratory experiments we do peer partner learning very important make them sit together two two people together peer partner learning is very very good because that leads to a sense of competition also science fair fair we always have we have a science exhibition this time we had uh, for um, science day no we had the march 20 Science day. We had one. Uh, if you tell them to make experiments and tell them that you are going to exhibit, people are going to see you. You had the best of the world. Textbook assignment use of local communities or local resources. Organic farming is done by some farmer next to your school. Take the children there. Respect for the farmer comes. Organic farming is learned. we have a zero we had in our colony zero garbage project where the segregation of the renewable and the non renewable sources was done and no garbage was sent to the corporation because either the plastics were sold the paper was sold the glass was sold the metal was sold and the whole thing and the uh, renewable became compost and the compost was given back to us as uh, manure for our plants local video lessons sport based learning crossword these are some of the tools okay i'm uh, okay done are you happy yes ma'am yes ma yes ma'am so this is what we have done i will tell you one very nice exciting all of us will do now okay Yes, ma'am. Take a pencil. We'll have a crossword puzzle. Now, how do children make? See, we make a crossword puzzle and give them, right? We give them a crossword puzzle. Yes. So we have uh, five down and five across. Are you all aware of a crossword puzzle? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. All yes, are all aware. Now, yes, ma'am. Crossword puzzle. We should not give them. They will make their own crossword puzzle. Now, how do they do that? You tell them, okay, children. Now, all of us will make for the yesterday's lesson. We'll tell them, children. I'm just making one one word, giving it to you. Molly cubes. you can normally we don't put the uh, plural of the word molecule okay now this will be one down so all the clues they will write it what are the what do you mean by a molecule that they will write one sentence about that then you tell them you use all the words that are there uh, then what can i have matter across plastic here you can say that what is plastic a material that floats in water yes one meter so you have one more tell me ma'am any other thing that you can make give me some word ask Huh? Ma'am, matter and liquid matter. Very good. See that way, you know, 
whole board becomes full of a crossword. We don't have to make a crossword. At the same time, when you are making the crossword, you are telling the rules of the game. Ah, tell me another one. Object O, and we can oh, tell you. We have, no, you should have call a it. for that. Orange, call it. Orange, orange. Call it. We'll have S, yes, ma'am. O, S, L, I, D. L, I, D. Ah, uh, then uh, what is a clue you can have for this? The state of matter. Matter, which has a definite shape. And volume. Definition. What is a clue for this? So this is one, one, two. Later we will name. In what which state of matter the molecules are arranged very closely? Ah. With a definite, uh, uh, yeah, beautiful. Give me another one. Ma'am, miscible. Miscible. Where should I put miscible? Ma'am, uh, in that solid S O L I D I. So up I. you can put M and then we form the let word down. If you put here, you cannot yes. have two words which touch each other in crossword. So oh, you teach them yes. the rules like this. Yes, ma'am. Dissolve. Ah, yes, B I S S O L V E. Dissolve. So beautiful. So you see, dash dissolves in water. My cube. Dash sugar dash in water. Dissolve in water. So you can make your own clues after making a wonderful crossword. You don't have solvent. Huh? Solvent, ma'am. Solvent. S O L V E N T. You have a definition for solvent. You can use that. Fantastic. Now, teachers, do you realize that we are going through the whole lesson? Children will go through all the lessons in a fun manner. All the definitions are over. All the examples are over. They have read through all the lesson and at the same time written the definitions as clues down and across. I, I do this for every lesson because I would have spoken for three days. Then we would have done the question answers for two days. One day crossword puzzle. Every child has gone through the lesson because they will not read the lesson at home. You can make many. It, it just goes on and on. So much is happening. So many you can put. You can extend this way, extend that way. This is one of the exercises I, I enjoy in the class. Apart from what all I show in the class, that's a different issue. That's a different issue, what I show. But... This I definitely do in the class after every class. Every lesson is over because that helps them to read in a lesson. Otherwise, they will not. You tell them, go read in the house. Did you read? Bah, they'll be standing next day. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> this is all our experience. Yes. All of this, all hel our this helps them to be thorough with the spellings also. Ah, superb. See, spellings. Pronunciation. Yes, definition. Important words. Example. Definition. Definition. Huh? Definition. 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 They are thorough. Thorough in the sense they at least know what is there in the lesson. So when they start reading yes. their question answers, it's a very easy method of learning. Because more and more yeah, you yeah. have to superimpose in their brains for them to, for it to stay. Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So now we have finished our methodologies, the work analysis, and we have finished the different ways of um, different tools. And the finally, we will go to assessment. See, whatever said and done, whatever the excuse me. Whatever said and done, the finale of our teaching is an examination. For a large country like ours, internal assessment will never, uh, may never 
will never uh, uh, become the same as an uh, exam paper. 80 and 20, it is 80, 20. It will never become 20 and 80. So this 80 marks should give us a feeling that we are not doing injustice to children just by throwing marks. If we say that the paper is easy, then it, it is, we have not done something proper. If the children come and say, ma'am, a really nice paper, ma'am, we enjoyed doing it. Then the question paper is a successful question paper. And for learning all these, uh, making a question paper, you have to understand the Bloom's taxonomy. Do you, are you all aware of the Bloom's taxonomy? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Ma thank you, ma'am. Thank you. This is how innocent children should speak. So now, what is this Bloom taxonomy we studied in BH? This is how it takes place. The bottom most questioning is about the knowledge. Understanding the knowledge is the comprehension. Application questions, analytical questions, synthesizing, and finally, evaluation. So the final thing is also called as create. There is one lesson in EBS, third standard sketch. Make a sketch of your neighborhood and um, show the different buildings with symbols. Make your own symbols, creation. So creation of a symbol does not mean that you should be a doctorate to make a symbol. You can start creating something beautiful even in third standard. So you make your own symbol of, uh, uh, of a small building that came up next house and you named it something. So you say there is a play school and you made a, a symbol of a play school that is next to your house. So you can create. So this is one very important. This, you know, we have a lot of seminars on this. So all the questions should not be, what is this? What is that? What do you mean by this? What do you mean by that? No. Some definitions. Then you have application oriented questions, analytical question, differentiate between this and this. I have a beautiful question in communicable and non-communicable uh, uh, non diseases. I don't say what are the symptoms that you uh, see when you uh, when a patient goes to a dog, when a, uh, when a person is suffering with, uh, mm, what are the symptoms of typhoid? No, that's a straightforward question. You should make them analyze and then write the answer. Radha went to the doctor and she said she uh, her mother was saying that her eyes were yellow in color. Her urination is also yellow in color. She has body pain. She's not able to eat. What did the di uh, doctor diagnose the disease as? What are the preventive measures? What are the diet restrictions that the doctor told her to take? Which organ is affected? Four mark question. Straight away, we did not ask the symptoms and so you will say that the doctor diagnosed its symptom as jaundice. This jaundice is spread by contaminated water. It affects, which organ is affected? The liver is affected. The doctor told her to eat less oily items. So this is how you will bring the question. No direct whole paper shouldn't be what definition, simple questions, no. There should be a lot of questions in such a way that they analyze and write. Application-oriented questions, very important. Simple machines, you can use a lot of application. My mother, my grandmother used to pull out water from the well. But my father fixed a pulley. How did it help the mother to, uh, to uh, do less work? We should not ask. Okay. No straightforward asking, differentiation. 
analytical questions. That is why MCQ also we have assertion reasoning questions nowadays. Where the child reasons out whether the first statement is correct, wrong, or it correlates to its uh, second sentence. So that is about Bloom's taxonomy. What is the time? Oh, 10 30. Okay. So we have, I have another lesson, and we whatever we have gone through, we, we will take this lesson and we will do some interactive session. Is it okay? Yes, ma'am. Is it okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah, I have a simple lesson. Internal organs. I'll just give you two minutes to read the lesson. So this is how the muscular system goes. The digestive system goes. Then the respiratory system. Circulatory system. Nervous system. So the whole place, this whole lesson is full of now we, will, now we will organs. Yes. Now, so for such a lesson, yesterday I have given you a hint. How will you go about? Yesterday, I gave you a, one particular example how when there is a big lesson with too many things, what do you do with such lessons? Make a flow chart. Make a table or column. Ah. And in this one part of the board, what you do is you draw the system. You draw the system and write this is digestive system. What are the organs? So go to all the organs that are there in the, mentioned in the textbook. So what are the organs that are there in the textbook? The organs are? Mouth, foot mouth. pipe, ah. stomach, yes. large intestine, small ah. intestine. Yes. So we have food pipe, stomach, then in the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, anus. Mm -hmm. All the organs you put, write it. And if there is a function for each, please write the function. So first system is over. Second system. Suppose you have made the skeletal. Skeletal system, what you do is, you know, skeletal system, you, when you take them to the lab, ask them to write all the parts of the skeletal. So the skull, the ribcage, the lips, the hip bone. And for each, you write a function. Because drawing of the skeletal system is difficult for you and for the children. Then take all the models. I have lovely models of the respiratory system. So what I do when, when sometimes when I go to the doctor, you know, when I go to the doctor, what do I tell him? Uh, you know, these doctors have got lovely visual aids on their table. Have you seen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And what do they do with those things after some time? They don't dispose it of. Dispose it of. Very correct. Who told me that? I am. <laughs> they dispose it of. Yes, Ganeshni, they dispose it of. So, suppose I had an unfortunate visit to a respiratory doctor, pulmonologist. I saw one very nice uh, lung, one with smoker's black lung, one with red uh, color lung, one heart in the center, very magnetically kept. 
I told him, sir, will you use this? He said, no. I said, can I have it? He said, yeah, I have it. He said, anything for the teacher. I brought that to the school. There are some doctor children uh, who are dentists. To get a set of teeth from the dental, get some teeth. I have all that in my lab. So I can teach them dental caries. Okay, I can use it from 1 to 10 when I talk about dental IG. So many models are there in the classroom, in the labs. Bring all those. Show them. Draw. Make a tabular. For every system that you So the tabular column is two sides. They'll say, no, miss, this page is waste, miss. If you take the page, miss, as you tell them, let us waste one page. We will write some other question answers. Take a full page like this. Make a lovely tabular column. System, organs, You can do the diagram also in the next little space there. So the whole lesson is so systematically written on the um, this thing uh, in your notebook that within 15 minutes the child will learn everything. Anything you ask, he will tell you. Draw and describe it as digest system. Yes. What is the meaning of uh, what are the different organs? What is the function of this organ, this organ, this organ? Everything will be there. Then there are certain other things that they do. Inhalation. And uh, using of the stethoscope. Asking you, these are the few things which are uh, for digested, for good digestion. What are the prerequisites? Uh, eat meals on a fixed day, every day, balance, drink plenty of water, chew your food well. So, all these can be other questions and compared to your tabular column. There will be another 10 questions. But that you can give it according to the Bloom's taxonomy. Differentiate between arteries and veins because he has spoken so much about arteries and veins. So there's a differentiation question. Uh, or you can give them one beautiful, create a balanced meat that you would love to eat tomorrow for your lunch. So they create their own meal. They create their meal. I want this much of salad. I want this sabji. I want this roti. I want this dal. I want raita. I want biryani. And then you can tell them, yeah, biryani is nice. Curd is also very nice. Haha, ha, lovely gulab jam. Where is your protein? What is a balanced diet? You should have proteins, vitamins, carbohydrates, minerals, fats. Everything should be there. If he says, ma'am, puri and aloo tomorrow I'll have with curd. You should ask him, where are the proteins? So they themselves will create a balanced diet for tomorrow's lunch. Understood? That's how the questioning should be. So today's assignment will be, make a question. Did I give you any assignment? Ma'am, you gave me uh, that lesson plan. Lesson, lesson plan, plan ma'am. Lesson plan I have given. You can make the lesson plan. Any question, paper. Paper. Learning uh, outcomes, I have given you methodologies, I have given you assessment, uh, different ways of assessing children. You can make a beautiful lesson plan. Under this lesson, I will ask you to make a question paper. Because to make a question paper with the Bloom's taxonomy on a biology lesson is slightly different, difficult. Because application, what application will you use? No application questions. You can always say having a balanced diet. How will you take care of uh, uh, your breathing? Then you can bring how do you take care of your muscles, the pranayama, the exercises. Those will be uh, those will be the extra application oriented questions. How will you take care of your uh, this beautiful human body that we have been given with, with bestowed with, given. So that will be an answer application because you are applying the knowledge to daily um, daily routine that those that very important are the pranayama and the yoga. You can bring this in this lesson. Balanced diet. What are the values that you will teach? The yoga, the pranayama, 
and the balanced diet. You have to make a great emphasis and that should be asked in your question paper. So you will make a 20 mark question paper. I will be sending you along with the uh, logo of the DAV and uh, we will make a question paper just for 20 marks. Five MCQ questions, two mark questions, three mark question, five mark question. And so, uh, one more very good question I am telling you, you draw the skeletal system, uh, you draw the digestive system and you say observe the digestive system diagram and uh, recognize the body parts given from A to E. In fifth standard, drawing of systems are, is very difficult. So what we do in, in our school is we will draw the diagram and we'll say A, B, C, D, E, F. Label, uh, write the uh, parts which is labeled from A to F. So that will be a three mark question. Six into half three. So drawing uh, diagrams are very difficult in uh, for fifth standard. The one or two will draw. So we will draw for them. We will draw for them. All this, we have the respiratory system. We have, um, and we can also say what, label the parts A to F and write the functions of A, C, D. Or A and C, two marks for functions, one plus one and six into half three. So your five mark question is over. So here the observation, the skill of observation is also very important how they have observed the diagrams in the book yes so lesson plan is over and i have uh, taken care of the bloom's taxonomy and i have also told you different ways of teaching the content how you should think how to uh, make the learning from the book into the class very simple very systematic that you have to think every time when you start a new lesson. And then how to make a question paper I have taught you. Okay. And if I had some more sessions, I would have gone into the uh, details. Definitely we'll keep meeting. Right.